in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed yes. If they look at your exploits and look at who is behind it, something should look unfair there as a proof that you have outsourced the wisdom wherein you have used for that exploit. Someone shout amen. amen. So, the spirit of faith, number two, gives you access to the anointing, the power of God. Spiritual empowerment is very important in our faith adventure. Number three, very quickly, and then we'll pray. Has God blessed someone? What is the third implication of having that revelation of the King of glory as the Lord strong and mighty? I wrote down here, the third effect, the third implication is that praise will continually rise from the world of men unto the King of glory. When you have a revelation of the power and the might of God, it will compel praise perpetually. Every time you study scripture, you will see that when there was a display of the manifold power and the wisdom of God, what emanated from that experience was praise. It is impossible to be silent when you see the Lord strong and mighty in action. Let me give you three scriptures and then we'll pray. Psalm 107, the full text is from verse 8 to 32, but I'll just read one or two verses for the sake of time. It says, oh, that men would praise the Lord. Why would they praise him? It tells you the reason. For his goodness and for his wonderful works. Where? To the children of men. You read down to 32, you will find it there. Oh, that men. It's an instruction. It's a strong admonishment that every time you see the goodness of God and his wonderful works done to the children of men, praise must emanate from you. That means praise is not supposed to be something that is mechanical. There is a place where you praise him in advance. But believe me, your life can be perpetually full of praise because your life will be a plethora, an episode of the wonder-working power of God per day. Notice the people who experience the power of God. Even when Jesus asked them to keep quiet, they were too grateful to be silent. There is something about the nature of authentic power. When the Lord strong and mighty is revealed, there is something about the design of the human nature that stops you from being silent in the presence of something spectacular. This is the basis of media. Media sells because of that intrinsic construct in men. It is impossible to see something spectacular and yet be silent. At best, you will select who hears it but you will not be silent. Are we together? Praise. In Daniel chapter 6, Daniel chapter 6, from verse 25 to 27, then King Darius wrote unto the people, the nations, the languages that dwell in the earth. He's writing a letter now. Peace be multiplied unto you. Next verse, please. I make a decree. Who is speaking now? The king. The once arrogant king who said, let me see who will deliver you from my hand. Now by reason of the wonder working power of the Lord strong and mighty, he's not ashamed. What an honest king. 
Even though arrogant, he was honest. In the presence of that which was superior, he used his hand to write and to speak a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. I don't know his name, but I know the individual that has revealed that unique expression of him. I've not had the time to study him. May people call God even by your name. May people say, I... I I don't, I don't know the name of this God, but I have found out that the God of Bishop Wale Oke, there is something about the expression of God through his life. The God of Abraham is still the God of Isaac. He's still the God of Jacob, but the dimensions are different. What the God of Abraham will do for you is different from what the God of Isaac will do. Your assignment is to use your lifetime to give God a name brand his name through your walk with him for generations to learn him that at the end of your faith walk you would have introduced a dimension of God as captured by your experience let's wrap up the king is making a decree for he is the living God and steadfast forever and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed look at the sermon that one manifestation of power gave a king an orientation without Bible school. In a moment, he learned God through the spec. For someone, your testimony is about to be a devotional for people. Listen to what you heard me say. A devotional is not what you read once. That by reason of what God does through your life, someone will be using your life as a template to study God. Paul calls us living epistles. That means your life should be a continuation of someone's Bible study. As he closes his Bible, the study should not close. Something about the workings of God in your life should be the continuity. Someone is feeling guilty that I didn't read my Bible today. At the sight of you, he finds hope and comfort. I can keep learning God from a life that has been able to capture a rich heritage of the Lord, strong and mighty. But only a shoe will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. Listen to this song. There are names, there are titles, there are legends and tales of strength. But only a shoe will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end There are thrones There are kingdoms There are mountains and there are kings But only a Yeshua will reign forever To his kingdom there'll be no end Let's wrap up that scripture. 26. The king is making a decree. Daniel, I make a decree. He says forever his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be unto the end. The last verse, 27. He said he delivereth and rescueth. This man did not go to church to learn this. He watched God, the Lord strong and mighty walking through a man and it provoked praise that he, he threw aside his reputation to stand and declare the greatness of God. He walked signs and wonders in heaven and in earth who had delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. Let me wrap up by saying this. The king of glory Cannot be understand, cannot be understood until the Lord strong and mighty is understood. Understanding the King of glory is understanding his might and his strength. He's not a king because he was voted to power. He's a king because no one else can be king. There are people who become kings. I, I was watching the election in Kenya and 
you know, they just um, upheld the other party and, you know, by the privilege of God's grace, when I was there, I had the opportunity to meet both parties and to have a discussion with them and just to encourage them for the sake of this. Listen, if there's a verdict, you accept it, this and that and that. But you see, for God, it's not like another party won called Jesus' party or God party by 254 and then there was election malpractice. Even if God keeps the position, there's nobody to take it. He shall reign. Please stand. He shall reign. He shall reign forevermore. Emmanuel. God is with. He shall reign. He shall reign. Let me lend a minute or two to make a very important call. John chapter 17 and verse 1, the Bible says, Jesus lifted up his eyes unto heaven and he prayed and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify now thy son, that thy son may glorify you. When we get to verse 3, he says, And this is life eternal, that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus whom thou hast sent. There are many keys of the kingdom the mysteries of the kingdom but there is only one key to the kingdom and that key is Jesus the Bible declares there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved are we together and I don't want to take for granted that even though this is a very spiritual gathering that someone is here because the Bible declares that the Lord added daily not as many who should be transformed, as many who should be saved first. That means everywhere there is a gathering of God's people, there is always someone there sent from God to be saved. I'm going to make two altar calls in one right now. Number one, for those who are saying, Apostle, it's an honor to have listened to the things that you have shared. And here at this convention, I've been convicted hearing you speak. I do not know this king. I'm like Darius. I have seen what God has done through our father, Baba Wale Oke. But I do not know him for myself. Unfortunately, those who will do exploits are the people who know their God. He can start as someone's God, but the process should later evolve him to become your God. It must never stop as the God of another. He must become your God. They told the woman at the well, we believe not because of what you have said again. We came because of your testimony. But having met him, we know that he is now our God. The second group of people are those who, maybe you have made this decision at one point in your Christian experience. And then for some reason, things have gone haywire. And right now, you know, even by the conviction of the spirit. For the Bible says, when he, the spirit of truth is come, he said, he will guide you in all truth. He says that he will reprove the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. And whilst you are seated there, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and saying you can make it right. I'm going to make a call for these two groups in one. You want to make things right tonight so that you can know the King of glory. He can be strong and mighty in your life. He can be strong and mighty in your destiny. Wherever you are, I will count one to five for sake of time. I want you to leave your seat very confidently and come and stand before the King of Glory. I begin my counting now. One. Young and old, be bold. Come before the King. Two. Win that war of destiny once and for all. If you're coming, please run. If there are people coming from outside, let's hurry up so that we can redeem time. Three. Believers, are you celebrating salvation? The King of Glory wants to give you an experience.
for the word is nigh thee in your mouth and your heart even the word of faith which we preach the bible says if thou shalt confess jesus with your mouth believing him in your heart you shall be saved come come to jesus doesn't matter how far please come quickly I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back hallelujah listen an altar call is a very serious call most times people come out for altar calls and they don't even say anything they pinch themselves they play around the truth is they are not saved there is a spiritual pattern allocated for the administration of salvation the bible says in romans chapter 10 when you read from verse 8 to 10 it says there must be an activity between your heart and your mouth for salvation to be administered coming is only a way of saving the people and then helping to guide them make that decision but ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters hear me it is not coming out that gets you saved in fact it is not even a spiritual recitation that gets you saved the sincerity of this conviction by the spirit in your heart then verbalized by your confession of faith is what qualifies for the administration of salvation for the Bible says, this is the record, the testament, that God hath given us eternal life. But he constructed the administration of eternal life such that you must encounter the Son to have life. You cannot have this life without meeting the Son. So I congratulate you standing upon the grace of our Father. It is an honor to welcome you to this family of faith. May I please request... By the way, for those who are watching by way of television or watching online, you are following from across the globe, right in your home, your office. Here is an opportunity for you to make Jesus Lord of your life. There is no distance. There is no barrier here at this conference under the leadership and the grace of our Father, Bishop Wale Okay, It's my honor to lead you to Jesus. As we pray this prayer, I want you to pay attention and to pray that prayer. For some, you may be listening by way of a rebroadcast. He can come to you in the name of Jesus. Lift your right hand. <clears throat> say, this as, say this after me. Say it loud and clear. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I declare that I love you. I declare that I believe in you, that you are the Son of the living God. I ask you, to forgive my sin and I receive your life I declare that you are my Savior you are my Lord and you are my King I also declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever I am a child of God I am a recipient of eternal life I go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name please keep your hands lifted father we thank you the Bible declares that as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away by the authority of Scripture I declare your sins forgiven and in the name of Jesus Christ I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God I commend you to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance even among them that are sanctified. And according to your confession of faith, I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave is broken over your life. Amen. You go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name. May I please request that you follow the counselors. There is a board there. Just follow them orderly. Let's, let's honor them as they go. Please be careful with the crane so it doesn't injure you. 
Aleluya. 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 I want to stand upon the grace of our Father and Daddy thank you again for this opportunity. I do not take it for granted. I am truly honored and truly grateful. I have the honor of speaking over our lives. Kings rule by their words. The Bible says where the word of a king is, not the word of a man, where the word of a king is. Psalms 82 and verse 5 says, They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness, and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6 says, I have said, Ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. 7 says, But you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. <clears throat> In the name that is above all names, I stand upon the grace of our Father and every servant of the living God here represented, and I declare, the same way the gates open for the King of glory to come in, every gate that has been closed over your life and destiny, we speak to it now, Ephata, be open. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, gates of new dimensions, gates of new seasons, in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Acts chapter 12 that Peter was bound hand and glove and eight soldiers were protecting him. Verse 5 says, but prayer was made of the church unto God for him. And an angel came. And the Bible says when the angel tapped him, the first gate opened, the second gate opened. Listen, he said he came to the iron gate that opens to the city. There is a gate that controls influence. If that gate is open, what you see in front of you is the city. I prophesy to you that everything that has buried your influence, may the one who can cut the bars of iron and break the gates open may he swing open the gates for you and then he says at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and they sang and the Bible says the people in the prison heard them suddenly there was an earthquake and a sound and the Bible says and all doors opened they needed only one door but when the king of glory came all doors so that others too can pass i decree and declare may that all door anointing open every closed door in your life <laughs> hallelujah all blessings come from god through men to men it doesn't just come from god to men men have always been midwives the bible says the king sent for joseph it took the king sending for the prison to be opened. Whoever must send for you, in the name that is above all names, may the father of spirits, the one who compels men to look for men, compel your helpers to send for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And on the third day, the Bible says, that an angel came and rolled the stone and sat on it for the king of glory to come out the kind of angelic assistance you need by the privilege of the grace that comes through redemption let angelic activities be dispatched for your sake are they not ministering spirits send today that be the heirs of salvation Hallelujah. He said, Our brother Lazarus sleepeth. Let us go and wake him. When they got to the tomb, he said, Roll away the stone. It took a man to roll away the stone. 
there are some stones that men must roll away financial stones in the name of Jesus I decree and declare all stones be rolled away the Bible says for as he is so are we in this life if he came out of the grave then I prophesy upon you like the bones in the valley of Ezekiel in the name of Jesus I prophesy as have been commanded bones find your bone and be restored to an exceeding great army hallelujah please hear me the Bible says when Lot judgment was about to be declared over Sodom and Gomorrah Lot was with his daughters there are we together when the angels came the men came and wanted to sodomize the angels and Lot even offered he said take my daughters and the people refused and the angels struck them with blindness my Bible says they wearied themselves at the door you can be close to the door but if your eyes are not open that you are close to the door but it will still not open the miracle of open eyes the Bible says then open he their understanding that they might understand scripture in the name of Jesus may the king of glory open your understanding access to light Paul was praying over the church in Ephesus chapter 1 from verse 16 he says I bow my knees to the father of our glory of glory that he may grant unto you wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him knowledge is not revelation it is knowledge and understanding that becomes revelation you can have knowledge and awareness and yet not have revelation the eyes of your understanding he says being flooded with light that ye may know for these 40 years every door God has opened for our father we stand by the privilege of connection and by the privilege of the altar here I decree standing on his grace every door that did not close for him it will not close for you every door that opened for him across the nations may it be open for you hallelujah for these 40 years death could not come to him therefore I declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead every covenant with death Job said he will deliver you in six things yes seven things one of it is the scourging tongues of men if there is any tongue speaking against you to bring you to the grave I declare be escaped like the bird before the fowler <laughs> hallelujah Now, please listen, everyone. I've been given the permission to do this, and I just want to do this. Just help those under the anointing. When Cornelius, please listen carefully. When Cornelius, the Bible called him a centurion, and he said he was a devout man who feared God. I hope you know that the salvation of the Gentiles started in Acts chapter 10 and it came through the wings of a man who understood two things. Heaven commended that the basis for that visitation was based on number one, the strength of his prayer and number two, the strength of his giving. As, as powerful as God's redemption plan is, it rode upon the wings of a supposed ordinary man you would think the salvation of the Gentiles should happen through a mighty apostle and a prophet but it came to a military man only because he satisfied two conditions the health of his priesthood and his benevolence towards blessing men if he could bless men then he could be a worthy tool even for the kingdom now please hear me when it has to do with the subject of giving I submit to you shamefully but truthfully that many people have been wrongly manipulated within the body of Christ and sometimes it's even an ugly concept when we talk about it, it it's very ugly because people have 
merchandise the gospel sadly we know God is purging and helping his church are we together however I will tell you this the Bible says a son honored his father and one of the principles of honor is giving with understanding for if giving is by manipulation there is no reward are we together the Bible says he that so sparingly he shall reap sparingly he that shows bountifully will reap bountifully then he says every man according as he has proposed in his heart so let him give cheerfully and not grudgingly for God loves a cheerful giver the next verse says and God is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye having sufficiency in all things that you will abound in every good work I can tell you this there are mysterious principles that lift men in this kingdom among them is connecting to prophetic patriarchal blessings through giving with understanding 40 years is a very prophetic number because it means the end of a season of training the end 40 years gives way to 10 more years that declares jubilee at the end of 40 years a man is now authorized to enter his season of appearing it's a prophetic number are we together and i want to challenge us to give beginning from myself i will not preach what i don't believe I will not preach what I don't understand. I will not preach what I don't agree with. I have preached and we have spoken about the King of Glory. The entire plan of redemption was given. That God carried his son as a seed and sowed him to the earth. And as a result, he's today received many sons into glory. I want to challenge you. I have already agreed with God even before I came here. I will tell you the truth. I fear God, I will stand before God. I will not be a party to anything that does not glorify Jesus Christ. But I want to challenge us to give. And this giving is twofold. Number one, to honor this work and to honor these 40 years. To tap into this grace that God has so lavishly granted our father and our mother. But number two, I want to challenge you. We are sowing into the anointing of our father. It is not compulsory it is by revelation but I can tell you this is the mystery behind the rising of many people I know that this principle works if done with understanding I'm not going to give you any amount I may not have the liberty to do that and I apologize but I'm going to challenge you I already have my seed for the convention not to announce for pride my apologies but just to challenge our hearts and my seed for our father. I would never come to see our father and not hold a seed. The reason why it does not work for us men of God is that we tell people to do it, but we don't do it. That is the truth. The same Lord is rich unto all. Anyone who does this in truth and with understanding, I know the things that have changed in my life. Once upon a time, some of you may have heard my stories. When I met two women, daddy, and I was going to buy sugar cane and the women were standing there like her mommy and I pleaded I said I will I will pay for you just to honor them not looking for anything and one of those mama looked at me they were blessing and I, I didn't really pay attention but she looked at me with audacity and said my son forever walk upon gold this was what she spoke to my life it was in a city midwife in Quara State and Ekiti State. I returned from preaching many years ago in Afe Babalola University. On my way returning to Quara to take a flight down, you know, to Abuja and then return back home, I decided to stop in a small village there where I saw that people live mysteriously long. I saw the obituary 100 and something. Every time you see repetition of patterns, there is a grace supporting it there. Are we together? The Bible says, for this purpose, many are weak, sick, and do sleep. What is the sin? Not discerning the body. There are spiritual investments that reside within the body that through honor and discernment, you can tap into it. I was a man of God, but I had to throw that away. When I stopped, I couldn't speak Yoruba, so I pleaded that they should look for someone. I said, who is the oldest man now in this city? 
My apologies that I'm, I'm taking some time, sir. My sincere apologies. But I just want to charge our hearts so that we can receive. I stopped there and I saw a man, 136 years, he had just died. I couldn't believe it. In Nigeria, I know the kind of call God has for me. The kind of my call is close to death perpetually. So when I find an anointing for longevity, I tap into it with wisdom. Are we together? I've been in the midst of many crises right from the time in Zaria and the north, even before the Lord brought me. I know what it means to be close to the gates of death. I know men are preserved by the wisdom they have. Are we together? And I carried a seed and I saw some women there and we finally got a, a man who was speaking limited English and I said, please, they should take us to anybody who is the oldest there. We entered a room and there was a man, I think he was maybe probably a senior apostle, he looked like a man of God. And I was talking and they would interpret. And we said, Baba, we are men of God. And I just want to come and honor you and to have you bless us. He sat on his chair and laughed and said, kneel down. See, those who have this thing know they have it. <laughs> this is a true story. I got down on my knees with my seed and he began to speak in Yoruba. I didn't hear one thing he said, but I felt like a crown was being put upon my head. Once that was done, I got up sowed the seed and blessed him. Going to go and enter the car, I saw the women that were standing. And I said, let me go and appreciate them. And they now told me this 136-year-old man who died, that was his wife standing. No glasses, no stick, no nothing. The wife of his youth. I went back. I said, madam, he may have died, but the Bible says two shall become one. So he's still alive in you. Pray for me again. This is a true story. If I'm joking, I'll tell you I'm joking. The woman tapped me and said, follow me. I walked with her and we entered a room, daddy. And when we entered that room, she started showing us pictures. She was the wife of his youth. And you know, they married very early. That woman remained with him like that till the final days. And I said, mama, please, can you pray for us? She took off her shoes and said, kneel down. She stood on barefoot on the ground. And for the next 15 minutes, she was praying. I can tell you, I am a product of many anointings. And it did not just come through prayer. That's the point I'm trying to show you. Some came through prayer. Some came through prophetic seed connection with understanding. Forget about the abuses here and there and some of the mistakes people have made. I want to challenge someone right now. May I please request if we can display the ministry account number? I don't know how we are going... Okay, beautiful. I don't know how we're going to do it. For those who have a prophetic seed, particularly for our father and our mother, may I please encourage you by the message of God. You may want to label it. You may want to get the account details. I don't know how the officials will coordinate it. But I'm going to pray. May I encourage everyone to sow something. I want to pray right now. A transfer, you can make whatever it is. Whether it is now or later, just a word I have the permission to do this and I just want to do this and then we step down. It's an honor for us to do this, to do it with understanding. Hallelujah. Those who are following online, you love our Father in the Lord, Bishop Wale Oke and his dear wife. You believe in what is happening here and you are tapping into that grace, sowing into his life and sowing into the vision and the conference. We're about to pray. Hallelujah. I'm standing in faith by the privilege of God's grace alongside every great man of God here, fathers of faith here represented, and together as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, those who have been privileged to be partakers of the grace upon our Father, we want to pray. Hallelujah. You can use the account details. You have your seed there. You can sow. I may not necessarily ask you to come out, but I want to challenge you to really, really sow from the depth of your heart. Your church can sow, your business can sow. As an individual, you can sow, but make sure you do it with understanding and revelation. It is not the activity that produces results. It is the understanding and the purity of heart that supports what you are doing. Let's pray. Father, again we stand 
upon the grace that you have so lavishly invested upon our father and our mother and upon this great vision Lord I stand in partnership with every man and woman of God in this place veterans of the gospel and Lord together as a united family we thank you for the gift of our father that the wale okay and our mother we thank you in the name of Jesus for this great vision 40 years of exploits even by the spirit father in the name of Jesus you have challenged your people to sow to honor our parents to sow to honor the work therefore Lord I stand by the privilege of this call and by the privilege of this grace I declare for everyone who has given is giving and will give may the God of heaven who answers by the name Jaira may he visit you in the mighty name of Jesus I prophesy to you like the prophet said over Samaria for some of you by this time tomorrow in the name that is above all names may the Lord turn your captivity and give you joy in the name of Jesus Christ like Elijah spoke to the woman in Shunem I speak to you your bread will not be spent in the name of Jesus Christ when men say there is a casting down for you let it be that there is a lifting up Paul explaining the mystery of the seed said God is able to give your seed another body you are sowing money reap favor you are sowing money reap wisdom you are sowing money reap restoration may God give your seed another body in the mighty name of Jesus Christ the level at which you have given you will never go below it in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray for you for every soul that is won through your seed for every life that is mentored and transformed for every activity that makes for kingdom advance that is sponsored by your seed may it rise as a memorial for you in heaven in the name of Jesus Christ may the Lord bless you as you sow and increase you in the name of Jesus daddy thank you again may the Lord bless you in Jesus name dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development Lord grant me the discipline 